Well, hello again. It's been a little while uh, since my last video, but I started doing some work that I thought would really benefit uh, some of you other builders out there. Um, just because this is something that I didn't expect to happen, but it did. And the more I thought about it, the more I figured it's going to happen to everyone. And that is uh, sometimes no matter how well you plan or how well you follow what others have done, um, stuff's just not going to fit. And uh, you're going to need to come up with some creative solutions uh, around that. Uh, what happened to me was uh, as I built my drive units, um, I uh, made sure that the drive units fit inside the shell. Um, but I didn't do that with the motor installed. Um, and my motors um, are 150 watt versions. Uh, I think the standard is to use 100 watt motors. Uh, and so I didn't realize it at the time, but my motors uh, stick out about a quarter of an inch too much. Uh, and when I tried to put the foot shell uh, over this particular drive unit, uh, this is what happened. Uh, yeah, so it was not going to fit, could not get it on there. Uh, so uh, what do you do in that situation? Well, you just got to dremel it out. Um, and this is what I have done for this particular drive unit. Uh, and I'll show you a little bit more about how I go about dremeling stuff out. Um, and you can see from this side, I've expanded the opening a good bit here. Uh, I've also uh, taken out some of the corners along here. Uh, if you look along the bottom, you'll see that I took it almost down to nothing. See if this can focus. But uh, with a little bit of careful dremeling, um, and clearing away a lot of the material, you can see even some of the infill and some of the structure there. Um, worked out pretty well. Uh, it does bring up a lot of people's concerns about PLA and warpage with temperature. And uh, all I can say is, um, yeah, it heats up and it gets a little bit soft, but uh, it cools down almost instantly. And as you can see, I didn't lose any of the, any of the detail on these recesses. It didn't turn to liquid in my hand or goo or anything like that. Um, if you're careful and you just use common sense, I think you're fine to dremel any, any uh, material out if you need to. So now that I've opened this up, I'm able to get the foot shell over the drive unit without too much difficulty. And you'll see that it's on there. You've got a nice, uh, it's pretty level up here. This foot shell is not quite finished yet. Um, you've got your mounting holes that line up here and here. And on this side, you've got two mounting holes there and there. So now with this on, uh, the next problem that I ran into is the battery box. When I go to install a battery box, You'll see that it will not it will not close up because the motor is again protruding out too far, and this battery box is not able to sit flush. So, in addition to modifying the foot shell, I'm going to need to grind out part of the battery box. So what are the tools for doing this? Well, I've kind of got three main bits that I like to use on my Dremel. One is just your standard cutting bit. Although in this case, these bits are a little bit too tight uh, for me to really be able to make use of this. Uh, by far, the one I use most often is your typical sanding drum type bit. And I have a smaller one here that I'm able to get into smaller recesses and make tighter corners. So I've already done my other battery box. We can compare the two and see what kind of work needs to be done. So if we put these bottom to bottom, you can kind of see where I've hollowed out and increased that recess right there, basically creating more clearance for the motor. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a pencil. I'm going to mark the line roughly there 
and then I'm just going to start taking away material. So whenever I'm using my Dremel to remove material, I always make sure that I use the Dremel on the highest setting. Uh, you really want it to go fast. Uh, it really helps uh, take the material away quickly. Um, actually gives the rest of the material less time to, to heat up or anything like that. On this piece, you can see that I've got a good four or five perimeters on this. So there's really very little infill. Uh, it actually makes it really quite rigid. Um, these little bits that come off, they're a little bit soft. Um, they're still a little bit warm, but the rest of it is, is you know, pretty much the way you would expect it to be. It's totally normal. Um, so this goes pretty quickly. And again, having the, the extra perimeters really, I think, gives you the flexibility to be able to take all this material off and not have to worry about anything deforming uh, too dramatically. Um, if you sand it, it, it's actually already pretty smooth. Uh, could maybe use a little bit of sand or a file at the very end. Uh, but this hasn't taken very long, only a few seconds really of, of grinding. So uh, I've got about half of it off, and so I'm going to go ahead and do the second half of this. And you can see, I just uh, you know, let those little bits cool before flinging them off. Um, in this case, there's actually a little, a little bit that has already cooled enough that I can't even pull it off. So I mean, that's how quickly this stuff cools off. Um, so a quick cut with the utility knife, and... Uh, there you go. That's pretty much good to go. Um, again, really pretty clean. Um, there's really not much to it. So now we will give this a try. We can put it on and you'll see now that it fits up nice and tight there. Really no gap. And if we look down below, you can see, actually, you could see briefly there that, uh, yeah, everything clears and uh, we should be good to go. All right, so we've now, we've attached the four screws that fix the drive unit to the shell, as well as the two screws on the bottom that hold the battery box in place. And you see that everything fits together pretty well, and really no one's going to notice anything on that battery box. You notice anything that's out of the ordinary or whatnot. The only thing that remains is you've got the magnetic half moon piece uh, that snaps into place there. Uh, you also have these. These are the ankle locks. If anyone's printing a Mark III drive, I think these are still located in the Mark II foot parts. Um, these are probably one of the cleanest prints I've ever produced. When I first started printing Flex, I was pretty intimidated by it. Um, but in the end, I've actually got my printer dialed in pretty well for that. This print here is absolutely no post-processing of any sort. That is right off of the printer. Uh, I print these at about four perimeters and I think 20% infill. So they've got a bit of, a bit of squish to them, but they're fairly rigid. And these will slot in right there, and they'll provide some cushion for the motor, or for the ankle. So the other thing to keep in mind is make sure that you orient your motor enough that you have enough of uh, enough cable here to make it all the way through the ankle. Uh, the other thing too is connectors for this. Um, uh, I'm probably going to go with some form of bullet connector something that's very narrow and very low profile so that I don't have to completely remove the connector. It's a pretty tight fit going down through that hole. In fact, I might still have to take this outer insulation off and split these two wires completely in order to be able to take the foot off and the motor at some point if I need to. So let's go ahead and put the ankle on and see how that works. So this ankle is obviously still a work in progress. Uh, I don't have any actual axles for it yet, but you can see how it sits right on top of that ankle uh, lock there. I still have a little bit of slack coming out of here. Uh, it's going to still be a little bit tight when I get the leg on to be able to disconnect that if needed. But uh, And then all you see really is the ankle lock and the motor cable right there. 
So again, with this video, it's really just a matter of understanding that you're going to come into situations where you're going to have to modify the pieces. They're not always going to fit. Um, and don't be scared about taking a Dremel and grinding out PLA. Um, it's worked fine for me. I did a lot of it on my dome. Um, just, uh, you know, it's, it's not, uh, PLA is not as delicate as some people might make you think it, it is. I've had no problems at all with, uh, uh, with the whole thing warping or anything like that. Just a quick little bonus here. Here's both of my feet in their current state. Uh, there's been some concern over how this piece of the drive fits in and sometimes does leave a bit of a gap. Um, it's pretty common for that to happen. Um, in the end, it's not something you're really going to be able to notice unless you're looking for it. But overall, I think those are looking pretty good. I just need to wait for the weather to kind of reach a happy medium where it's not too hot for me to paint. Well, I hope this helps. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.